folks, Tony from Father and Son Fishing. Thanks for stopping by. In the next 10 minutes, we're gonna show you everything you need to know to become a better fisherman. And whether you've never fished before or you're still a beginner, just follow our tips and tricks and techniques and you'll become the best fisherman out there. Before you can go fishing, you need a fishing rod. So really there's two types of rod. There is the bait caster, which is the green one here, okay? And there is a spinning rod. So I'm gonna walk you through the mechanics of both of them and which one might be best for any beginner. And we will focus our time on spinning rods and spinning reels, okay? Which are much easier to operate. They're a little bit cheaper to buy the combo together. And this will allow you to get fishing quick and still be able to have fun and bring in any fish you catch. More complicated bait caster reel, okay? I would not recommend that you start off as a beginner with a bait casting reel and rod. And that's because the reel is a little bit more expensive and it's quite complicated uh, in terms of the drag and the settings uh, and the speed that you have to operate because you can easily get tangles and backlashes in your line if you don't know exactly how to work it. For a spinning rod, what you wanna do is you wanna look actually on the center of the rod here and it will show you the length this is a six foot six medium power, which is probably what you wanna start with. It's easy, con easy to control and it can handle every type of fish you catch. And you'll see there it's a fast action, which helps you reel the line in a little bit faster and easier. And you definitely wanna get a rod that is made out of graphite as opposed to fiberglass. And that's because graphite rods are very, very sensitive. And you can feel everything that the fish is doing under the water. It will make it easier to catch more fish, I promise you that. One more thing about your rod. You want to make sure you get one that actually has this little hook holder here. And that's really important because what that allows you to do is to actually put your hook right on the holder. Okay, so that when you are transporting your rods, it doesn't get caught in the carpet of the back of your car or doesn't catch on any of your clothing. When you are selecting the actual spinning reel for your spinning rod combo, you wanna pay attention to the number of bearings that the reel has, the ball bearings. The higher the number of bearings, typically the smoother the retrieve and the casting will be. And that just makes it a lot less clunkier. So as many as you can afford, try to get four or five bearings if you can, but many of the premium reels go up to 10 or 11. You probably don't need that as a beginner. Okay, so the last thing you really need to know about a spinning reel is the drag, which is most of the times on the top of the reel, but it also can be way on the bottom as well. But for the drag, all you wanna remember is just like when you're plumbing, righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. And the drag will, is the amount of tension that puts on the line. So for example, if you are fighting a bigger fish and it starts taking out your line, you want to tighten or turn to the right the drag, which will put more tension and make it a little bit easier to reel in the fish, okay? But you wanna make sure that you don't over tighten the drag too much if you have monofilament line because it could snap on a big fish. Folks, you're also gonna wanna get yourself just a nice little package here of split shots. Attach to your line and that allows the bait to get down to the bottom. This little package here is real cheap for about 10 bucks. You can get all the sizes that you need. So all you do is put the split shot on your line and snap it closed, just like that. Start using a bobber when you fish. You will catch more fish because it will notify you whenever there's activity below the water. The easiest of all bobbers is just a round bobber here. And all you do, push down on the top here, it exposes a little latch. You just hook that latch onto your line and let go. We just talked about the round bobber, which is made out of styrofoam. But my favorite to use is the stick bobber or the pencil bobber, they call them, which is made out of balsa wood. And it's very, very light. And this actually sticks up in the water and Anytime you see any movement below, you're gonna see it a lot easier on a stick bobber than you will on a traditional float bobber. Like. What you're gonna do here is remove the spring and you will latch this section onto your line like that. 
and loop the line around twice and then let go of the spring and then that'll stand up in the water just like that. Once you have your spinning rod and reel and you're ready to go, you gotta have yourself a tackle box. Doesn't have to be anything too fancy, but get something with an arm strap where you can kind of carry it over your back and hold your rods at the same time. Carry some hand sanitizer with you because fish smell things very sensitively. So any oils that are on our skin or smells we have, using some hand sanitizer will also help you up your chances of catching fish. So if you really enjoy fishing and you get good at it, you can get a bigger box like this that has multiple compartments. It obviously has a strap that you can carry and you can virtually carry anything that you have with you, including fish scales and uh, your fishing license, all of your boxes and all of your tackle and gear, scissors, pliers, hook removers, everything you could possibly need you can fit in a box like this. All right, just a couple more housekeeping things. You always wanna make sure you got a good pair of polarized sunglasses when you go fishing, especially in the summer if it's really sunny. It'll protect your eyes against UV rays that are harmful. And polarized glasses will allow you to see fish moving in the water. That'll also help you spot where schools of fish are, and that's where you wanna cast your baits. Always make sure you have your fishing license on you at all times, especially if you're fishing public bodies of water. And if you don't have your license on you, you probably are gonna get a fine or a ticket. You may even get your license suspended if it happens to you a few times. So rule of thumb, always have your fishing license with you. Invest in one of these Plano line spool boxes. They're only about 20 or $25. And as you can see here, they hold six spools of your favorite line, inexpensive way to keep all your line in one place and make it a lot easier to eliminate backlashes and tangles in your reel when you're restringing new line. Okay, enough theory. Let's put all this stuff to work and go fishing. First thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you get a blood red hook, okay? And you can get them in a size four to start with. These are really good, these Eagle Claw Snell hooks. And the Snell are these little jabby points that help keep the bait on better. Okay. Red, first of all, is a bass's favorite color, and red is the color of blood and wounded or dying bait fish. So a predatory fish is more likely to attack a wounded bait fish or a bleeding bait fish, and it's an easier meal. So if you want to catch more fish, proven over time, get yourself some red hooks. Okay, so we've got our red hook, and then we have our split shot down about 10 to 12 inches above the hook, and then we've got our bobber, and we're ready to cast it out. The best way to catch fish is getting live night crawlers, okay? Every fish that swims will absolutely love these. You can catch bluegill, carp, catfish, bass, and lots of other species of freshwater fish with live night crawlers. It's your go-to bait for beginners. And when you're rigging up your worm, you want to make sure that you actually put the hook through the body of the worm, okay? And you want to leave the head, which is the dark brown area here, exposed because that's what moves the most and drives fish crazy. So if you hook through the body of the worm, it'll make it harder for pesky little bluegill to get it off. Okay, and a really cool casting tip to make sure you never get tangles in your spool line here. Annually release the bail of the line. You'll grab the line with your index finger and hold it against the rod before you cast. And then when you cast the line out, as soon as it hits the water, Lower the bale manually. That will help it from being more clunky and wearing down the reel, and it'll make it easier to stop any backlash in the reel. All right, let's go ahead and cast our bait out. So just keep your eye on the bobber, and as soon as it goes under, you want to set the hook. So looks like bobber down. We got one. Okay, set the hook. We got one. Fish on. There he is. It's swimming in, and it looks like it is a sunfish. It is, and he hit the... Uh, he hit the nice worm. Here is the sunfish bluegill we just caught, and you can see uh, he didn't get much of the worm, but he went right after the head. So we'll go ahead and pull this out and send him back in. Find the top of the hook right here, and we're just gonna actually pull it right out of his mouth. Okay, we removed the hook of the fish, so now let's just go ahead and softly release him back in the water. There he goes, and make sure he's ready to swim away, and there he goes. So we hope you really enjoyed all those tips tricks and techniques, and you'll put them to good use as you start fishing. Fishing is a really enjoyable sport. It's very rewarding. It's very relaxing. 
and you will love it. So please make sure to like this video, hit the subscribe button as we continue to grow. We'd love to have you on board and hit the enable notifications bell so you'll never miss another great video just like this. Happy fishing to you. Go get them, gang. We'll see you out on the water.